My name is Julie Kalabaut and I work for SPREP, which is the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Programme. And I work on the INFORM project, which is all about sharing data and making data easily accessible for environmental reporting. And I'm John Bryant. I'm a GIS consultant and geospatial developer based in Australia. Uh, I've got a small company called Mammoth Geospatial, and I'm really interested in open source uh, software and open, uh, open street map and open data. And over the last few years, I've been really involved in organizing uh, uh, FOS4G state of the map conferences in Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific. Okay, and this talk is about OpenStreetMap data specifically for the Pacific region, and we've made the OpenStreetMap data and QGIS projects uh, readily available for Pacific GIS users and map makers. So we're going to start off by talking about um, what is OpenStreetMap, uh, and if you haven't heard of it, um, it's a uh, it's a collaborative project to create a free editable map of the world. So think Wikipedia for maps. Um, it's built by a community of mappers, so people like you and me, um, and anyone can edit it and add their own knowledge. There, there have been over one and a half million contributors from around the world, and there are over 6,000 people making edits every single day. It's a uh, community-driven project, so it's not owned by any company. It's run by a foundation that belongs to the community, and it's called the OpenStreetMap Foundation. And OpenStreetMap is a perfect example of open data, uh, meaning you can download it um, freely, and you can reuse it for anything you like as long as you credit OpenStreetMap and its contributors. And Julie's going to tell you a little bit more about the project that we did. Yeah, so before uh, starting on the project, we were looking into some, some typical challenges in the Pacific region. And in general, we see that there is a lot of spatial data available, but there, the data is not always easy accessible. It sits on personal computers of, of individual people. It's not always free. In some cases, you need to pay even within uh, national governments for your own national data sets. Um, data is also not always shared among users um, because the MOUs are not in place. In a lot of cases, it, the data is also not documented with metadata. And also, in a lot of cases, um, standards or protocols are not followed um, when the data is, uh, is used or, or created. Um, so all of these reasons kind of lead or explain why there is actually a high interest in open geospatial software and data in the Pacific. But when we look at if OpenStreetMap is actually used in the Pacific, it, we see that it is really underrepresented and not widely used at all. There is a little bit of OpenStreetMap community action in the Pacific. Um, for example, in French Polynesia, there is a very active group of people um, engaged in community mapping projects. So they come together and, and and map, um, map their region. Um, but so we see that a lot of users are interested or curious in the OpenStreetMap project, but generally speaking, um, the OpenStreetMap community is very small in the Pacific and usage is, is quite low. Um, and then if I go to the next slide, so when we were talking about the project, we had this idea like, what if we made, because we see that OpenStreetMap isn't is could be very useful but isn't used a lot so what if if there were a pacific focused data resource that made it easier for for the users to start using it because um as a gis user or a map maker um you spend a lot of time downloading data sets looking for data sets that you need um to use as layers uh, if you want to build a map and if you use OpenStreetMap extract, extracts, it's not always that easy. Like it, you know, it takes a bit of skill to to filter down or symbolize the layers. And so we thought, like, if we would create a simple system that would do that work um, for the user, maybe um, it will make it a lot easier for for people to start using it. Um, so we hope with this project that map makers. Um, that will help map makers over the initial hurdle of working with OpenStreetMap data 
and that they can discover how rich the data is uh, for their region and that they get inspired by you know, filling in the gaps and, and maybe developing and starting their own local OpenStreetMap community and in the, in the longer term, maybe even join the global um, OpenStreetMap community. Um, so John will, will, will show you now how it actually works. Um, so how, how does it work from the GIS user's point of view? Um, so it's a, it's a package of data and a QGIS project that you can download from a website, and we'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, but so when you download it and you unzip it, what you get is a geo package. Uh, which is a data format with uh, thematic data layers in it. And it's divided up into layers that, um, that show a lot of the different types of features that you would see in OpenStreetMap, but you can um, load them as separate layers in your GIS, turn them on and off, um, symbolize them, and do spatial analysis on them, stuff like that. Um, we've set up a QGIS project uh, that's pre-styled, so it's got um, symbolization of all the layers applied to it and um, and they're, they're labeled and they're um, in a certain order so that so that they look like a map so you can start using it right away and you can mix your own data in with it uh, however you like um, the data is um, in an open spec format, so a geo package, you can use it in other software besides QGIS, but we've set it up in QGIS because that's an, uh, a freely available open source uh, piece of software that you can download and use for free. Um, and it also comes with some user-friendly documentation that explains uh, a, lot of, a lot, of, lot more stuff about the OpenStreetMap project, about the data, um, about how it's laid out in QGIS, and also how you can um, learn more and uh, even go and edit the data in OpenStreetMap, which we're going to show you in a moment uh, with a demo. So I'd just like to show you some of the different parts of this project and how they work together. Um, if you haven't used OpenStreetMap much before, the web map is a great place to start, and that's what we're looking at here. So if you just go to your browser and type in OpenStreetMap.org, it's going to come up with a web map like this one. And then you can pan and zoom around, and this is a great way to sort of get a feel for what kind of data is actually available in OpenStreetMap. So if we just zoom into Samoa and Apia, and we can see there are actually there are hundreds of buildings, roads, points of interest, um, and other features that uh, might actually be quite use useful to you in your uh, GIS projects. So what we've done is we've set up QGIS, we've pulled this data down from the OpenStreetMap database and bundled it up with QGIS projects um, that you can use in your own work. And so let's take a look at Apia in the QGIS project. So I'll just switch over to that window. And so now we're in the QGIS interface. And let's just take a look at the same data here. So if we zoom in, we can see it's the exact same data. Um, but when it's in the QGIS environment, you can see uh, it comes in in layers, so you can turn layers on and off. Um, so you can change the cartography up to be the way you want it. Uh, you can select features and export them and potentially use them in other environments. You can use the data for spatial analysis and you can mix it with your own data. So let's just add Let's add an imagery layer here, just as an example of using of mixing it with other data. So we'll bring in the Bing satellite layer and we'll bring it up a few levels. And if we zoom around, we can actually see, now this is the thing about OpenStreetMap. Is, so OpenStreetMap is created by people like us all over the world and it's very detailed, but it's not necessarily 100% complete. So if you wanna make a map of your area and some data is missing or wrong, well, that doesn't mean that you, don't, that you just can't use the data. You can actually add the data yourself. You can add these missing buildings to the OpenStreetMap database. So let's, uh, let's try that out. So I'm just gonna change these so they're a slightly easier symbol to see over top of the satellite imagery. And let's say I wanna add a building or two in this area here. So I'm just gonna go find that area in the OpenStreetMap window. And here we are here. 
So we've got a matching location. So I want to add some buildings in this location here. And so I'm back in the in the web map here. And you have to be logged in. So if you're not logged in, um, if you don't have an account, you can get a free account. You just have to sign up for one um, and you can start editing right away. So in this window, you just start an editing session. I'm going to edit with ID. That's the in-browser editor. And it brings up a satellite image with the lines laid over top of it. So now we can actually trace these buildings. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trace this one here just for an example. So I choose area and then I just trace the shape of that building and I'm done. Now, when you're adding buildings, it's a really good idea to square them. So you can see my shape's a little funny there. So if I just right click on that just square the corners of the feature. And then once I've got my geometry, once I'm happy with that shape, I just go up here to feature type and I make sure I tag it as a building. And that tells OpenStreetMap that to render it in the building style. So once I'm finished that, I can do that for as many buildings as I want here. I'll just do that one for now. Click on save. And it's asking me for a change set comment. So this is just a comment to tell OpenStreetMap what I've done with this edit. And I'm just gonna say add a building in Appia. And click upload. And that's it, it's finished. So we've just edited OpenStreetMap. We've added a, a building to the map. And in not too long, that building is going to show up on the main base map here so that everybody can see it. And next week when I update my QGIS data, it's going to show up in there as well. So that's it. There's a lot more detail, but um, I, I'd say just go for it. Get in there and start mapping some buildings. It's a great way to get started and get familiar with OpenStreetMap. And um, uh, try out the QGIS project and see what the data is like. Okay, so where can you find the, the data? So these OpenStreetMap products are updated every week and you can download them or from the Pacific Environment Portal. That is the regional portal where you can download the entire data set or the entire OpenStreetMap data set for the Pacific region. But if you're interested in, to, in your national data set, national OpenStreetMap data set, you go to one of the 14 country specific data portals that are available through the INFORM project um, for each country. But I'll show you now in a live demo how it works. To access the OpenStreetMap products for your country, you can go to your own national environment data portal. In this case, we're using the Samoa environment data portal, and the address is samoa-data.sprep.org but you can easily replace the first bit, Samoa, by the name of your own country to go to your own national data portal. Once you're there, you can type OpenStreetMap or OSM in the search bar, and this will take you to a list of datasets that are related to that search. So in this case here, you can see you also have access to the OpenStreetMap data for the entire Pacific region. But in this case, I'm going to click on the national data set for Samoa. Once you click that, it takes you to a separate page with some explanation on the data set and here a link to the zip file that contains the data. If you click on that link, it takes you to another page where you can start downloading the zip if you click here the zip icon again. And that's it. Once your zip is downloaded, you unzip it on your computer and you have access to all the different products of OpenStreetMap. Once you've downloaded that zip file and you unzip it to your computer, this is what the folder contains. You have access to a license file. You also have a PDF, which is documentation to help you get started. The geo, packages, um, the geo package contains all the GIS files. There's also a QGIS project and the QGIS layer definitions, which is uh, symbology, etc. So click on the QGIS project 
to get started. So to learn more, um, there are a lot of resources, but uh, one place you can go is join the uh, Talk Pacific open mailing list for Pacific OpenStreetMap users. Um, you can post questions to the list and maybe somebody will even answer them. Um, and to learn more about the OpenStreetMap pro uh, data and project, you can go to the OpenStreetMap wiki. Um, there's a big community in Oceania that's growing. Um, connect with the community and uh, learn more. I just want to say thanks to the OpenStreetMap project itself as well as the QGIS project. These are two community-driven projects that uh, make this work like this possible. And Geofabric and FOSGIS, which are two organizations in Europe that uh, provide some of the extracts that we use for this uh, data product. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video and um, we're very eager to find out if this helps increase the use of OpenStreetMap in the Pacific and if you think these products are useful. So um, please check it out and let, let us know what you, what you think. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks.